We're in lesson 4 now. I hope the animated mini lecture for lesson 3 didn't frighten you too badly. I hope it scared you just enough to motivate you to learn the material in the chapter on theory. So many students over the years have, well, killed text scores by skipping over the chapter on theory. I really want you to avoid that pain. Now in this lesson, you're exposed to two more theories, social learning theory and control theory. I placed us in a coffee shop so we'd be alert, and gave myself a complete makeover. I now have hair, glasses, and this odd looking suit and tie. So cough it up and pay close attention. I covered these two theories, social learning and control, together in lesson 4 because there are important links between the two, as well as a very big difference. That big difference has to do with the approach control theorists take, as opposed to the approach strain and social learning theorists take in looking at juvenile crime. Most students really get strain theory and social learning theory. It is not unusual for students to become excited about strain theory and say, Aha! Strain and stress cause all this trouble. This is it. This is the most relevant and important theory. Then some of those same students, after reading the chapter on social learning theory, will say, Wait! This is the best most accurate theory in understanding juvenile crime. I understand. And I agree in the sense that each of the four theories has validity. And in my experience and observation it is easy in a textbook to define and discuss these theories as if they are completely separate entities. But in real life, I find the four theories more often present in conjunction with one another than existing as standalone explanations for a particular person's particular problems. Thank you. Thank you. If students struggle with any of these four theories, it is most often with control theory. I'm not sure why. Maybe it is because it is a very different approach to juvenile delinquency. I think it has as much validity as the other three theories, but I find some students tend to skip over control theory, and on tests miss the fundamental difference between this theory and the two introduced previously, strain and social learning theories. So learn from the mistakes of some others who came before you and pay close attention to control theory. They ask some interesting questions, and find some interesting answers. I'm prone to ask on tests for students to describe theories in detail, and while I see both social learning and control theories as easy to comprehend and recall, I have seen too many students gloss over control theory, and lose points on the test due to a lack of detailed understanding of the theory. Social learning theory is both intuitive and fascinating, as it explains the mechanisms by which we are influenced by others, the way behavior can be reinforced, or punished, and the impact of reinforcements positive and negative, and punishments, positive and negative. Control theory isn't at all concerned with trying to explain what may cause delinquency. Instead they ask what stops young people from doing crime. Why there isn't more delinquency. By now you have a feel for what I expect and it is my sincerest desire to always be an open book to students in my classes. You should be taking advantage of the self-testing opportunities at the end of each chapter. If you are it is a great habit that will help you to your best. And this should be another lively discussion forum. I'll bet you can all say something about peer pressure. Personally, I think it's important for us to realize that even as adults, we are often pressured by our peers to behave and to think in a certain way. Just look at language, clothing, music, fads. Look at cell phones and the recent love affair we have with them. I expect you to know these theories, all four of them, in a manner that allows you to describe them in detail and discuss them intelligently with others in the class, and other students, friends, or even interested parents. That concludes this mini lecture. I hope that you are all doing well in all your courses and that you feel good about yourselves. You should. You are pursuing educational goals at a major university, and this will all be worth it. An education is truly something no one can take away from you. It is also something you have to do for yourself. I'm just the guide. You are doing all the hiking. Until next time I wish you health and happiness. Have fun, and be safe. Don't text or drink and drive, and when around young people, put down those phones and give them your undivided attention. They do deserve our best.